It's almost here! Old school April! <laughs> okay, guys. I just shook the camera. Ignore it. We're gonna go to the short intro when we come back. I will tell you all the details about my TBR for Old School April, which is my readathon, watchathon, and nostalgiaathon that I am hosting along with some other fantastic, wonderful, tubular people. I'll tell you all about that when we come back. But before you even see me again, what you will see is me shopping my shelves to see what I want to read from my own very shelves, and I'm gonna fill up this kind of semi-blank book cart back here on the top shelf, and I'm gonna go through with you all that I find from my shelves. So without further ado, let's get shopping!
welcome back fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime, especially in April, to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between. Mostly books, but sometimes other things, and April is all about books and other things, so all of the good things, especially when it comes to nostalgia, at least for me. If you don't know, my readathon, Old School April, is all about the nostalgic vibes. However, if you don't care about nostalgia and just want to have fun and participate in an event, you can join us. You could be somebody who is more of a Gen Z type of person, someone who's a little bit younger, who doesn't give a crap about the 90s or the 80s or the 70s or the 60s or whatevs. It's fine. We will still have some fun activities you can participate in. We will still have sprints. We will still have prompts that you can fulfill with anything you want to read. So it's very versatile, very flexible. So if you haven't heard about all the details, I will link my announcement video below. I will also be linking all of my co-host channels below. Please, please subscribe. They are fantastic people and they are putting out so much great thematic content right now that I am so stoked and excited. I can't believe it. I've been watching so many old school April videos. Everyone's releasing stuff. I'm getting hyped. Guys, if you have a booktube channel and release any videos or vlogs, relating to Old School April during April, please, please tag me. Also, you can use the hashtag Old School April 24, same hashtag as we're using over on Instagram. Also, if you're participating in our Instagram photo challenge run by April at Apple and Alchemy, make sure you also tag her for those photo prompt challenge pictures. And also make sure you hashtag Six Sad April because that is the official name of the Old School April Instagram challenge. It's six at April. So those are some details. But without further ado, I found some great stuff. Some freaking banger books over while I was shopping my shelves. So I will go through with you guys <laughs> this honestly <laughs> outrageous, absurd pile of possibilities. It's out of control. I There's no way I can read all of it. I do have some books I want to talk about that are priority reads, which I'll go through first. Some of the priority reads are on the book cart, so I'll have to move it over. Others I just have on the list because I might not own the book. It might be audio only or an ebook. So without further ado, let's get into this ridiculous TBR that I will never accomplish, but it's nice to have choices. I will probably use my wheel and use other devices to help me choose what I read as I go throughout the month, and I'm so stoked. Also, if you want to hear about what I'm watching, I do have my watch list video out right now. I will link that below, so check that out if you missed it. I also include tons and tons of movie racks. Also, my friend Kat from Cat's Novel Adventures did a very thorough watch list for her, what we're calling TBW, to be watched list. She also included boatloads of recs as well. So she has a lot of different recs that I don't even mention in my rec video. So if you're looking for movie recommendations, check out Kat's video, check out my video. We got you covered. Also, Alex over at the Bookubus always has a lot of great movie recs. My friend Elizabeth at Elizabeth Sagewood, who's a co-host, has some great recs. And all of our other co-hosts, they love movies too, but they have got great book recs out right now. So like I said, please subscribe to all the hosts. And I do have a playlist which has all of the host videos, including my videos, that are related to old school April. So if you're looking for reading content, watching content, etc., it's all there in my playlist with all the host videos. Check that out. All right. So I'm gonna grab my little handy dandy notebook, which is really my old school April journal. So give me a second. Be right back. Do -do -do. I'm back. Let's consult my handy dandy notebook. You know, like Blue's Clues. All right. So I do want to make a note that I usually play a TBR game and it's based on the card game Uno and it has a lot of other factors in the game. Like I do use a tarot deck. I do use a whole bunch of other things, including the spinner wheel. So I am not playing that this month. I was going to, but there's just, there's just too much that I already have planned. So I will say though, I did buy special tarot cards and special oracle cards just for me playing the game, which I'm not doing, but maybe I'll use them throughout the month to help me somehow pick my watches and my reads. So stay tuned and check out my vlogs because I will be vlogging for the entire month and maybe I'll use these special cards that I bought off of Etsy that are 90s and retro nostalgia themed. All right, so I'm going to flip to my little TVR page. I do have the prompts. There are three pages of reading prompts, so freaking boatload of prompts. And that means lots of options and lots of possibilities for points. All right, so my pile of possibilities, these are the freaking highest priority books that I'm going to go over first. And 
I will also pull over my book cart too before we go through this list. First up is my highest priority book because it's my book club read for the month of April. If you choose to read this as well, you'll get an extra point because it satisfies the prompt Pimp My Ride, read a host rec or a host book club book. So this is my book club book, so you will be fulfilling that prompt, plus probably a whole bunch of other prompts, including the Willow prompt, which is to read a fantasy book. This is fantasy. Also, there's a prompt about reading YA slash middle grade. This would fulfill that too. So there you go. There's already three prompts that this fulfills, and I have a feeling it will fulfill quite a lot more than just three. So you'd have to go through the list and actually see after you read it and before you submit. But yeah, it's going to fulfill a ton. By the way, don't forget to please, please fill out your sign up sheet if you have not already choose a team if you want to participate and earn points throughout the month i need to know the group numbers so that i can average everybody's points so that it's very fair just because a team has more people doesn't mean that they're automatically going to win because their total number of points will be divided by the number of people on the team so you still have a chance if you're on a smaller team it does not matter if you're looking to sign up on a team that needs more people you could try to join silver snakes or Purple Parrot. Silver Snakes currently has the least amount of people, but again, it will all be very fair because we will be working with averages, not total numbers without the averages. So please sign up if you haven't already. It's important because I need to know the total number of people on the teams that will be submitting for points. But back to the book. This is going to be so much fun. I love the movie. Will the book be radically different? Will I enjoy it if it is different? If it's the same, will it still hit as hard as the movie because I love the movie so we will see. I have such high hopes for this and I'm hoping it's gonna deliver for me and be a five star or at least a four star we will see but this is my first and highest priority read for the month of April let's go! Next up, I am doing a read-along, a public read-along for the entire year, and it's a Richard Lehman read-along. He's a very divisive author, controversial, talks a lot about rumps butts, aka butts, whatever. Anyway, don't jump in if you've never read him. It's just not going well for people who are jumping in. If you like Layman and you know about his writing and you enjoy his work, then yes, please feel free to jump in. But lots of people who don't know about him are jumping in and not having a good time. I'm enjoying all the reads. And I have a Discord, which I will link below, where you could talk about The Never Ending Story, which is my book club book, or the Richard Layman read-along book for the month, or both. The Richard Layman book, though, like I said, is Body Rides. And that one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm not going to go through the synopsis here. You either like Layman or you don't. So I would advise you to look it up if you are interested. But again, I would really, really be careful and think twice about joining in on these Layman reads because they are not for everyone. And that is putting it lightly. <laughs> Next up, another book that will work for Pimp My Ride, the prompt, it will be Skin by Kathy Koja, which is my co-host Amy's book club pick for the month of April. So we all have read, lots of my friends and I have read The Cipher by Kathy Koja and all loved it. Very weird, very gritty. Skin, I'm thinking it's going to be very similar in terms of the grittiness. I don't know if it's going to be as weird. Probably not as weird as the cipher, but a little hint of weird here and there, I bet. So that is her book club pick. Her book club is the Dark Hearts book club, and I will link her book club discord down below. But I will be reading that. That's a priority, and I am excited about it. Another Pimp My Ride prompt pick for me is Night Warriors by Graham Masterton. This is one of Andrew from It Came From The Pages host recommendations. So he has said that this is awesome, this is fun, I like Graham Masterton, he's a trashy writer, kind of like Richard Lehman, but a little classier. <laughs> anyway, I think this is going to be a good time, I don't even need to know much about it. Let's see. In California, a woman's dead body gives life to an unutterably foul offspring. It already sounds great. Unutterably foul offspring. I can't say offspring. <laughs> In California! A woman's dead body gives life to an unutterably foul offspring. She has become the first mother of the night spawn. She will not be the last. The night spawn will cover the earth unless three ordinary people can tap the powers within them, unless they can learn to be night warriors, pursuing unstoppable evil through the nightmares of the cruel and the sweet sleep of the most innocent. The battle for humankind must be fought in dreams. Night warriors! This sounds legit incredible. I didn't even read the synopses till just now, and I'm here for it, okay? I'm ready. 
and yet another host rec. I am really stacking up the host recommendations because they all sound so good. This is Amy's host rec, or one of her host recs. This is Banicula. So this, of course, is another book that would work for the Pimp My Ride prompt, plus many others, and it looks so cute. It's just about a whole group of animals, and this dog and cat, they're suspicious of this new bunny that the family brings home, and the bunny kind of seems like a little vampire, like, you know, Dracula, Banicula. Cute! Let's go. This, I've never read it as a kid, so this would be my first time, and I'm very stoked to check it out. Yet another host recommendation. This is Katrina's host rec. You could find her at Katrina Brown. She's got an amazing channel, really great recs. And this is also the book club book for my friend Kelly and my friend Crystal's book club, Death by TBR. So I will link both of their channels below. Kelly is a co-host. Crystal's just one of my great friends. But they're book club is amazing. So this would count for Pimp My Ride. It's about Harper who goes looking for his sister after she disappears, goes searching for her on this island, and apparently the island is stuck in the year 1994, kind of obsessed with the year 1994. So this also has those retro vibes. It'll fit for the time warp prompt, and I'm very excited. I think this is going to be just such a fantastic time. A book I don't own, but it looks so good, Dead Flip by Sarah Farazon. I think that's how you pronounce it. I have actually made a long list of modern books that are either set in the past or have a nostalgic vibe. So this is one that I believe is set in the past, and the cover is fantastic. That's all I really need to know. Sign me up. I'm going to give it a chance. And if you want more info, I'm not going to go into detail about all of these books. It would take too long. So check out Goodreads if you want more of the synopses info. Next up, we have a romance book. Yes, it's weird that I'm putting a romance book on my TBR, but I've been known to enjoy some romance. This one I think I'm really going to enjoy because it does have a nostalgic flair. It is not set in the past, but it is definitely retro inspired. And that is because it is written by Kate and Danny Tamparelli. And if one of those names sounds familiar to you, it's because Danny Tamparelli was a huge star in the 90s. He was a child star, starred in The Adventures of Pete and Pete, The Mighty Duck all that on Nickelodeon plus many other things and Kate is his wife and they're so freaking cute together and she's talented in her own right I've heard great things about this book I am so eager to get to it it's semi seems to be inspired by their actual relationship but there's a lot of fiction in it as well so essentially these two people meet one of them is a past child star like Danny Tamparelli is in real life and the other is an aspiring writer so obviously Kate does write so that's almost so perfect right there so there will definitely be retro vibes in that it'll reference a lot of you know old school 90s things because one of the main characters is a past child star from the 90s much like Danny Tamparelli actually is in real life so I've had this on my radar for literally the last 11 months and I've been saving it for April it's time baby it's time I'm sorry I'm so excited expect lots of screaming it's already happened a lot it's gonna keep happening for this whole TBR video and by the way you might want to grab a snack gushers any kind of nostalgic snack or maybe wait till april because then you can get points for eating nostalgic snacks yeah we got activity prompts about snacks you can't go wrong like i said but anyway you might want a snack or a beverage this is gonna be long it's already seems long but who knows by the time I edit it, how long it actually will be. Another modern book that I think is set in the past that's on my TBR is The Cursed Among Us. I do have audio for this. In fact, this whole first section, except for Body Rides, all has audio. So the Night Warriors, apparently Banicula has audio. I just haven't found it yet. Dead Eleven, Dead Flip, The First Date Prophecy, The Cursed Among Us that I'm talking about right now, The Never Ending Story. Hard to find, but you can find it at some libraries. So check your library, your Libby apps, etc. All right, so like I said, The Cursed Among Us, it's on my list. Next up, The Stars Did Wander Darkling by Colin Malloy, another more modern book with nostalgic vibes. Might be set in the past, I believe. Next up, the nonfiction book, Paperback Crush, does have an audiobook. And I own the audio, so we will see if I get to it. It's not super, super high priority, even though I'm talking about it first. I do own the book. I do own the audio. It looks perfect. It's like, if you've heard of Paperbacks from Hell, the nonfiction book that chronicles the 70s and 80s and 90s horror fiction boom. It's like that, but with vintage middle grade for girls. So, you know, Babysitter's Club, 
all that stuff, Sweet Valley, Girl Talk, Boy Talk, all those kind of cute series, like Goosebumps, but for girls. And the covers are outrageous. I own some. You might have seen in my Shopping My Shelves section of this video. So I think it would be great to learn more about that. And I am looking forward to it, but I just have so much on this list. We will see what I get to. Next up, we have the 86 Fix. This would work for VCR, a book with old technology on the cover or in the story. This is by Keith A. Pearson. It says, hilarious, nostalgic, and just brilliant. So it's not a horror book. I'm mainly a horror reader. You do not have to read horror to participate in this readathon, though. So remember that. You can read fantasy. You could read romance. You could read general fiction. You could literally read whatever you want. You can even be a nonfiction reader and have a ball doing this readathon. That's why we designed the prompts to be so general. I'm loving the changes we made this year. I hope you guys like them too because we wanted it to work for everyone. We wanted everyone to be able to participate and be able to read what they want to read regardless of if they love nostalgia or horror or whatevs as I said. One moment, one decision, is the past easy to fix? This also will have time travel involved in the story, and we do have a prompt about that as well. Back to the Future is the name of that prompt. All right, so it says, imagine if you could travel back in time and relive one weekend as your teenage self, would you change anything? So essentially, that's the very loose premise. I'm not going to read you more from the back of the book. I have had my eye on this for almost as long as the first eight prophecies, so I have this high up on my list and we will see if I get to it. Next up, this does have audio, but I believe it might be on KU. There's definitely an ebook version of this. I heard about this, I think on Instagram and it just sounded so cute. Magic Movies and Murder by Emily Fluke. It seems like it's a cozy murder mystery with heavy nostalgic vibes. Check out Goodreads or Storygraph if you would like more information. All right, next up, a book I wish I owned because the cover is really fantastic. Lots of neon looking colors on the cover and we do have a prompt about neon. It's called Neon. That's the prompt name. All right so this is Rebel Girls by Elizabeth Keenan. I think it's YA but it looks very good. A lot of these though are not horror which is surprising because most of my TBRs are like 99% horror. Here you're getting a versatile Kelsey because old school April brings out all the different sides of me. Then we have This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. Again, not horror. So there you have it. All those books have audio. So if you are interested in any of those, check it out. Some of the audio, it's easier to find than others. Just make a note of that. Body Rides, again, does not have audio, I believe. I just mentioned it as a priority in the beginning because it's part of my public read-along. So now let's go to physical books that are very high up on my priority list, but that do not have audio. All right. One of the books that is a host rec, the host rec is actually the first book in the series, but if you've already read the first book, you could use the second book as the host rec, or the third book, which is coming out in April, and it's the final book in the series, you could use that as the host rec. So, any book in this Mina series would work for the Pimp My Ride prompt. This is the second book in the series, Mina and the Slayers, because I've already read the first book in the series, which is Mina and the Undead. The first book is the official recommendation of my friend Christine, and she's a co-host as well. You could find her at Secrets Read, and she's already read the first book. I've already read the first book, so we both plan on reading the second book. In fact, I do have a buddy read channel on the Old School April Discord, which is linked below, for this book and some other books. So if you want a specific channel set up for you and some buddies to buddy read something together like this, just let me know and I will set up a channel. But right now, this one already has a channel and so does the first book in the series. So both first two books in the series has a buddy read channel on the Old School April Discord. I am ready. This series takes place in New Orleans in the 90s and what's more nostalgic than that? By the way, I'm from New Orleans, so that is as nostalgic as you can get for me because I grew up in New Orleans in the 90s, so there you go. Another host rec. Yes, another host rec. This one is the recommendation of my friend April, who's running our Instagram challenge. You could find her on Instagram at Apple and Alchemy. As I said earlier, this is the beast from the east, and it looks really cute and good and it's really beat up. I thought this was dust. That's how beat up my cover is. I thought this was dust, but it's just banged up. But hey, I don't think there's audio, but goosebumps, they're short, quick, easy. I'm going to try to get to it. Extra points just because it's a host wreck. Probably a lot of other points for other prompts it fulfills too. I just have to read it and see. 
another host rec, which is Alex's host rec, the graphic novel The Crow by James O. Barr. And this is my friend Kelly's book club book. She runs a second book club called From Hell Book Club. And this graphic novel was originally published in 1989. I'm hoping to get it from my library. We will have to see, but that is a big priority. Next, I am so hyped about this book. I wish it had audio because I'm scared about how much time I'm gonna have for physical reading. Although this is short, it's basically novella length. Let's see, how many pages is this officially? It is, without seeing spoilers, come on, don't look at anything. It is 147 pages, definitely novella length, so it will fit our mini me slash short circuit prompt. This screams nostalgia. After learning about the existence of a powerful grimoire through a cartoon, 12-year-old Joe is determined to find it and change his lot in life. But in doing so, he'll also uncover a local priest's dark secret and how it may be connected to Joe's brother abruptly leaving town five years ago. Part homage to the small creature horror films of the 80s like Ghoulies, Gremlins, and The Gate, and part splatterpunk take on a Goosebumps book, Sabbath of the Fox Devils is a weird, diabolical, Diabolical coming of age horror story of self liberation in an oppressive religious environment set during the satanic panic. Prepare your soul to revel in the darkness. If you could craft a book that would hit everything I love in books, it would be this book, or at least this book according to what the description says. I have such high hopes for this. This is a five star prediction. I discovered it on a whim a couple of months ago. I forgot, I think I was on a stream with my Patreon members and we were looking at books. I think we were looking at the story graph feature of if you like this book, check out these books. And this came up, I read the description and I was blown away. Homage to small creature horror films like Ghoulies, Gremlins, The Gate, all love all of those. And part Splatterpunk take on a Goosebumps, like that, that line had me, it had me. Like, you know, you had me at hello, you had me at freaking Splatterpunk Goosebumps, bitch. Let's go, oh, please be good. Be good. Anyway, that's E.T. We're not, we're going off the rails. Next up, this is part of my 24 books to read in 2024. It's an ebook, Bad Movie Night by Patrick Lacey. I have read a book by Patrick Lacey and really enjoyed it. This one screams nostalgia and I'm ready for it. Another ebook that I don't own but has nostalgic vibes is Joey Lennard's Last Horror Movie Marathon. And this one is also on my 24 books to read in 2024 list as well. So those are pretty high priorities for me. Another book that is a host rec that's on my list is the picture book, the children's book, Two Bad Ants by Chris Van Allsburg. This was published in 1988 and it's my friend Kat's host rec. You could find Kat at Kat's Novel Adventures. And last but not least, in terms of books that I pre-planned, not books that I picked off of my shelves, is Nostalgia Mares by Mark Geyer. This book was provided to me by the author. Thank you very much, Mark. And I have been meaning to get to it. It seems like April is a great time. The cover looks great. It looks very Goosebumps-esque. I'm totally here for it. All right, those were the pre-planned books. Now let's see what I found on my shelves. You saw me searching, you saw me pulling things off, but there's a lot of things I didn't show because I couldn't show everything. We will quickly go through this. Won't be in any kind of detail. Look up more if you're interested. I mentioned this in my book rec video in terms of book recs that I have not read but would be nostalgic and appropriate for prompts for Old School April. And even though I mentioned it in that video and I said I wasn't going to put any of those books on my TBR, here I am putting one of the books on my TBR. I pulled it off one of my shelves after I reshelved it after that video and I was like, why not put it on the freaking TBR? So it's on the cart. Star Trek The Next Generation, X-Men, Planet X. So it's a crossover between X-Men and Next Gen. You can't go wrong. I have to get to this at some point. It's a little long, even though the font is big. I just don't know if I'll have time. It's gonna be read this year. That is my goal, even if it's not in April. I pulled some Goosebumps off my shelf in addition to The Beast from the East. I pulled two more that I have not read, but I would love to get to. Be careful what you wish for. And also, piano lessons can be murder. Love the covers. Goosebumps are always a great time. And we've got a Goosebumps prompt, so why not? Okay, and now we're gonna go through some Goosebumps knockoff books that I pulled off my shelves. They just looked great to me, especially because of the covers. Spine Chillers, Pizza with Extra Creeps, Old Technology on the cover with this tube TV and the antenna, Food on the cover, a monster maybe in the story, we will see. Anyway, perfect. Here we have a series called The Doomsday Mall. This is The Hunt, and because 
the series is called Doomsday Mall. We have a Mall of America prompt. This would work. Hell yeah. Here we have two Shivers books, which is a, again, Goosebumps knockoff series. And we've got one that's Ghost Rider, a book about books or about writing. We have a prompt about that. So here we go. And the other one, we've got a book that fits the mall prompt yet again. Madness at the mall. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, they're going down an escalator. An escalator. <laughs> Now we got Bone Chillers. I also picked another mall book, Beware the Shopping Mall. By the way, Cameron, I think, recently talked about this book. I think it was Cameron. He definitely talked about some mall books. He shopped his shelves, which inspired me to shop my shelf. So kudos to Cameron. If you have not seen his TBR slash shopping his shelves video, please check it out. Again, it's in that playlist of host videos down below. And his video completely inspired this one. So his channel inspires me a lot. That's no surprise, really. You can really see the inspiration of his channel in my channel when you really look at the editing and just the style. We just have similar love for nostalgic things, so it just naturally comes across as well. So thank you, Cameron, for inspiring this whole style of video and uh, for always putting great books on my radar, by the way. All right, the other Bone Chillers book I picked out is Slam Tam because I am Slime and Slashers. We have to have slime represented, of course. And we've got another Bone Chillers book that I pulled off my shelves. I almost forgot about this one. And this has old technology because it's an old school looking computer on the cover. Delete this. Blowtorch at psycho.com. Yeah, that's the name of this book. Truth is scarier than fiction. Jason is losing control of his own short story. Whenever he presses the save key on his computer, his words get twisted around and his story changes. Now Blowtorch, the main character in Jason's thriller, is trying to escape from jail, even though that's not the way Jason typed it. It isn't just a glitch in the software. Blowtorch wants to break out of the computer and into Jason's life. Can Jason delete the deadly computer virus before it deletes him? This really sounds, honestly, legit incredible. Now we have a graveyard school book. It is April Ghoul's Day because, of course, April, we have April Fool's Day. I thought this would be appropriate and thematic. Next up is a Dead Time Stories book. This is Welcome to the Terror Go Round. And my good friend sent me this, so thank you so much. I'm excited. I love a good carnival theme. And this looks like it takes place at a carnival, I believe. Yep. Carnival rolls into town late one night, bringing with it the weirdest, most frightening group of people Alex and Joey have ever seen. Hell yes. Here we have Blood Red 8-Ball, and it's a freaking 8-Ball eyeball, and that's creepy. I hate shit with eyeballs, but I also kind of love it because it creeps me out, and it's effective, and eyeballs look kind of cool, even though they do freak me out, but whatever. That's very strange. I... I'm creeped out, but I kind of like them. Anyway, this is a Spine Tingler's book. Had to add one of those as a possibility. But once again, this pile is massive. These all won't be read. It is what it is, okay? These will be picked out at random. It's for mood reading, so we will just see what I get to. This will be great to use maybe cards or a wheel to pick through my cart as I go reading throughout the month. It's just that I have a nice stack to choose from, and I can really just go with my mood and pick and choose from a ton of different things and a ton of ways to read. So there's middle grade here, there's stuff that has audio, there's stuff that doesn't have audio, so much stuff to choose from. I am so ready. Next up, I specifically wanna highlight some books that my two friends sent me in a care package. My friends Cameron and Benjamin sent me these books along with a couple of others, but these are the ones that I picked to put on my cart for April because I thought they would all be perfect. So first, I was floored by this. I didn't even know this existed and I literally screamed and almost cried when I opened the package and kind of in the middle of the pile of the package this was there. I just didn't know it existed and I love Ace Ventura, especially Ace Ventura 2, but literally anything Ace Ventura I'm pretty much obsessed with. One of the movies on my watch list, if you haven't watched my watch list video, so this is a spoiler to that, it's Ace Ventura 2 When Nature Calls because I love that movie and I love the rhino scene and I'm so weird and messed up, but whatever. It's novelization. A junior novelization, kind of, because it's so short, and I think it's kind of middle grade. Of the movie? Of the first movie. I'm so excited! It's got pictures, it's incredible, and I'm gonna use it for display for years to come, regardless of if I'm going to get to it in April or not, so thank you, Cameron and Benjamin, so much. Next up, another book they sent, The No Stars, The Puck Stops Here. This is incredible because I love The Mighty Ducks. I also have a Mighty Ducks novelization, but it's like 
D2. So I was like, I'm not going to read D2. But I want to read this because the colors are incredible. Also, hockey is really kicking into high gear in April. So this will be perfect. I'll be watching lots of hockey. I'll be rooting for the Bruins. Go Bruins! And it'll be a lot of fun. Also, by the way, WrestleMania is in April and I will be watching that. So if you're a wrestling fan or an old school wrestling fan, I don't have any wrestling themed books, but who knows, maybe I'll, I'll put one on my list somehow, because I do love wrestling as well, and I will be watching WrestleMania the first weekend of April, so hockey and wrestling and old school shit, that will be what is going down in April, essentially. Next up, Howl High, and this is all about a kid who is half warlock because his mom's a witch, and he says, most of my family was as supernatural as they come. I never could get the hang of flying or casting spells, so my parents decided to let me attend Howl High, a school that specialized in creating horror movies and had real kids as students. Don't forget that Halloween type of books would totally work because we do have a halfway to Halloween prompt because April is halfway to Halloween! It's perfect. April's a great month. This is Me Too. TWO, because there's two of them. It's a clone. And the synopsis is just like very reminiscent of the movie, the Disney Channel movie, The Other Me. I don't know if this book is what that movie is based on or if it's a coincidence, but this double is not a twin. He's a science project that is so much like The Other Me. And I am rewatching The Other Me as part of my watch list. So I was like, I would love to have the opportunity, if I have time to read this book, it would be fantastic, and I can choose to read it if I want to, if I'm mood reading off my card. So here we go. Thank you once again, Cameron and Benjamin. By the way, we have a whole other side to go through. I'm gonna go a little bit faster now. I am very excited, but it sounds like I'm low-key. It's just because my voice is dying. I've been traveling for two weeks, and I'm just legit dead. I'm so ready for April. I don't care. If I will literally lose my voice, I am ready. Let us, let's go. I can't even speak. So it seems like I'm not excited. It might seem like it, but I truly am. I don't know how it's coming off. I just feel like I sound like really down or hoarse, but I know it's just because my voice is tired. So just wanted to address that in case you guys are like, she's not even excited. I don't know who would think that because I think I also seem really hyper too. But if you watch me a lot, you might think that I don't seem like very genuinely excited, but I really, really am. It's just my voice is so weird right now. There is a prompt about reading Fear Street, about reading Point Horror, about reading Christopher Pike. So I chose a Christopher Pike as well as some of the other type of books. I'll talk about those as they come up. But I chose Road to Nowhere. I would love to get to this. The cover is insanely incredible, insanely badass. Road to Nowhere. Next up, one of our host movie Rex is actually The Great Mouse Detective, which is one of my favorite animated movies of all time. It has the voice talents of Vincent Price. He does the voice of Radigan, the main villain of The Great Mouse Detective. The Great Mouse Detective was based off of Basil of Baker Street. This book, I got my friend Andrew, who's a co-host from It Came From The Page, and myself a copy of this book because we both love the movie so much. So I would love to get to this because I am going to rewatch the movie. So woo, I'm so excited. I did pull some point horror and Fear Street books. All right, so let's go. For Fear Street, I pulled a book that was kindly gifted to me by my friend Kat. This is Fear Park, the first scream, and I love a good carnival, as I always say, and it's a three-book series. This is the first book, as I alluded to. Are we having fun yet? Excited. I hope I can get to this. We will see, though. And here are the two-point horror books I chose. April Fools by Richie Tankersley Kuzik. Kuzik? I sounded weird when I said that. Anyway. This, a lot of people read this last year. In fact, I think it was Alex's host book rec last year, but I did not get to it. I would love to get to it this year because, you know, April Fool's Day, April Fool's the book, it goes hand in hand. And the other point horror book that I pulled was The Babysitter 2 because I've already read The Babysitter and I should continue on. I am a huge fan of Dawson's Creek. In my watch list video, I did not talk about the TV shows I plan to watch, but I do plan on squeezing in hopefully, some Dawson's Creek episodes. And look, there are Dawson's Creek books. This is Lighthouse Legend, and we've got Joey on the cover, the character Joey. And these are Dawson's Creek suspense books. Nothing could be more perfect. I'm so excited. More vintage YA. We've got The Mall by Richie Tankersley Kuzik, and I know that Cameron talked about this book. So in that video that I referenced, the TBR video slash Shopping His Shelves video, check it out. I also want to read The Mall if I have the chance. 
and the cover's amazing, and it would fit the Mall of America prompt, like a lot of the books I've shown you on my cart, so perfect. And then also a Tombstones book, Dances with Werewolves. They're coming. It's Jump by John Peel. I cannot talk. Then we have a retro thriller, so it's a modern book, but it's got a retro flair. This is Hall of Mirrors by Charles Ash, and Cameron is the one who put this on my radar. He actually named it one of his favorite reads of, I think, last year or the year before, I can't remember, but he really loved this book, so of course. That makes it high up on my list, and that's why I pulled it to put it on my cart. Tons more middle grade, vintage middle grade specifically, Star Trek The Next Generation, Starfleet Academy, number one, Worf's First Adventure, I love TNG, so of course I'll try to read something like that. We've got Shadow Zone, guess who's dating a werewolf? Perfect. That would work for our Monster Squad prompt. Tales of the Gross and Gruesome, this has VCR, aka old technology, on the cover because of... The tube TV at the bottom. Ghost Rider, Steer Clear of Haunted Hill. My friend Monica over at A Little Bit of Monica was talking about how she loved Ghost Rider, the show, but also loved the books that used to come out. So I actually found one, and if you flip it, there's another side. Steer Clear of Haunted Hill. Steer Clear of Haunted Hill, so just two covers. Amazing. And she suggested for my Patreon jar, if you join my Patreon, you get to submit a book or movie or a book or movie prompt. She said I should check out Ghost Rider the show and if I could get my hands on it, the book. So instead of picking from the jar, I'm just going to take her suggestion and put this on the cart. So there's that. And let me pull more off the cart. Here we have the kind of books you would find in that nonfiction book I mentioned earlier, Paperback Crush. We have Sleepover Friends. This looks so cute. This is number one, Patty's Luck. And look, her hair's all messed up. How unfortunate. Then we've got The Adventures of the Bailey School Kids. This is number 14, Monsters Don't Scuba Dive. And then we've got Pin Pals. No creeps need apply. She seems so freaking sassy there. No creeps need apply. Get out of here, you creeps. I don't know which ones are the creeps, her or them, but anyway. Cover's incredible. It's on my pile of possibilities. In my pos pile of... Well, dead. Dead! <laughs> More! Lots of novelizations here and just random stuff. We've got a Power Rangers book. I'm a big Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fan, so we've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Super Zords. Then we've got The Goonies Storybook. Jurassic Park, the junior novelization. By the way, Jurassic Park, the adult novel by Michael Crichton. That is the host pick of our host Venus over at Venus Escapes to Read. So check out that. That could give you extra points. This will not count for that, but... I want to read Jurassic Park, I just don't think I'm going to have time, so why not ju the junior novelization? It could be an opportunity to at least get to something Jurassic Park related, perhaps, maybe. Free Willy, my friend Crystal over at the channel Fiber Artsy, who I mentioned earlier, who helps run Death by TBR. I love her so much. She gave me this, and I literally did cry, and thank you so much, Crystal, yet again. I love this. It's one of my most treasured books. Free Willy is one of my favorite movies of all time. It was my host rec last year, or one of my host recs for a movie. And it just warms my heart. I could watch it a thousand times and never get sick of it. Truly, if you have not seen it, it really holds up. It's a great kids movie, great acting, great heart, great emotion. And I'm so happy to own the cute little book. And I actually found Free Willy 2 not that long ago, the novelization. So I would love to get to the first one, though, this one, for Old School April. Next up, Five Minute Frights. I saw Cameron specifically put this on his TBR or a pile of possibilities. So I was like, why not put my copy into my pile of possibilities too? So thank you yet again for inspiring another thing as a part of this TBR, Cameron. <laughs> it's all thanks to you. You are awesome. Her last little bit of vintage middle grade. I promise. I promise. All right. And Are You Afraid of the Dark book? Yes, they made Are You Afraid of the Dark books. Kind of Goosebumps-esque. Not as good as the show or as good as Goosebumps, but still fun. I've read about three of them. I have not read this one, though. This is the tale of the horrifying hockey team. And again, because April is full of hockey, hockey is gearing up, why not add another hockey book? All right, here we have The Outer Limits, The Vanished. Of course, we've got a carnival involved and a clown on the cover. So it would work for the Killer Clowns prompt. Now we have two Phantom Valley books. We have The Evil One and Stranger in the Mirror. All right, the last books. We've got The Store by Bentley Little. I saw Amy over at Amy Noel Reads, one of my co-hosts, put this on her pile of pile of... 
<laughs> Why can't I say pile of possibilities? I saw her put this in her pile of possibilities, so I was like, why not put it on mine? It is in my 24 paperbacks from hell to read in 2024, so maybe I'll get to it. There's audio for this too, so that's a bonus there. Then I heard Cameron talk about in his TBR video, Scary Stories for Sleepovers, which is kind of a knockoff of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and there's a whole bunch of these, and this is number nine. I thought, might as well put it in the pile. All right, now we've got a nonfiction book. I started this last Old School April and was really enjoying it. I just didn't get to finish it, so why not keep going? Did I do that? <laughs> Did I do that? I can't do it. I can't do it like Urkel. Anyway, the best and the worst of the 90s, toys, games, shows, and other stuff. Lots of fun. Like I said, I was enjoying it, so I could potentially pick that up. Here we've got a Rocco's Modern Life themed graphic novel. By the way, we do have a prompt called Muppet Babies to read a picture book. Mangas count, graphic novels count, comic books count, because they are picture books of sorts. But of course, children's picture books also count for that prompt as well. So any of those type of books would count as a picture book. Even a book like Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix, which is full of pictures, or Paperback Crush, which is full of pictures, would count for that, as well as a couple of other things. But yeah, this would fit for, again, Muppet Babies. The last two on this insane, humongous, outrageous, ridiculous, I'm running out of adjectives, but I wanted to keep going and add in some old school words, but I can't think of any. They're all just like words for cool instead of like big and towering. Anyway, the last two on this freaking list in this pile, whatever you want to say, are these two more modern books. We've got The Worm and His Kings, which was Katrina's host rack last year, I believe. So this is by Haley Piper, and it does take place in 1990 in New York City. So I hear it's very root. I hear it's very weird, and I'm all here for weird. You can tell I'm losing it. I'm losing my voice. I'm struggling, but we're gonna make it. It's Rocky time. Let's go. That's supposed to be the theme song. This is my most chaotic video ever, and I'm not sure it's in a good way. One Girl in All the World, the sequel to In Every Generation, which is a book set in the Buffy universe a couple years after the show ends, and I loved In Every Generation. I gave it five stars. So, it's time I get to the sequel, and there's even a third book. I think it's out or coming out soon anyway. This is by Kendar Blake, technically a YA book. I really loved In Every Generation, and there's sticky stuff on it from Amazon. What the hell? I have to clean this. Anyway, I'm looking forward to getting to this. Possibly? Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll get to it. I'm gonna say that about all these books. All right, so nothing's for sure. That's the only thing that is for sure in this whole video is that none of these books are for sure going to be read in April, but I love that I have the option to and I wanted to share my possible list with you and also my excitement with you so thank you so much for letting me do that and for checking out my video it means so much to me and it means even more that you might be participating in an old school april too if you are thank you so much this is my baby besides my channel and my dog this is my baby of an event i worked so hard on this my co-hosts have also worked so hard and my patreon members so special thanks to patreon members my corns for helping me come up with prompts same thing with my co-hosts please 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 check out all my co-hosts i can't stress that enough they are fantastic people i asked them to co-host for a reason and without further ado that really is all i have for today till next time though you guys know what you can do <laughs> keep on killing it and get ready yeah, it's almost time to actually officially get ready to kick it old school! Let's go!